What epitomizes sports? For the fan, it is the memory. Games rolling into seasons. Two people sitting around arguing, what if? To the player, it is the moment. The moment when you are called on to perform. Olean, New York. In December of 1969, temperatures here were plummeting, but hopes were rising over the hometown college basketball team, St. Bonaventure, that had captured the hearts of the locals. It was the era of UCLA. Coached by John Wooden and led by the dominant play of center, Lou Alcindor, the Bruins had won three consecutive national championships. I had two very good ball games. I got uh, 29 and 27. I was named two of the all-tournament team along with uh, Jimmy McMillan and Calvin Murphy and uh, uh, Jeff Petrie. I started really working on my basketball skills. Developed more confidence in my game and started shooting ball going in. Uh, started thinking better on the floor, feeling more comfortable about who Bob Lanier was. One of the people that came up and introduced himself to me was Fred Handler. And uh, Fred asked if not only could I come and visit the school, but could I come right from Allentown. And while I was here, I had to go meet head coach Larry Weesey. And uh, when Larry brought me in, he said, we'd like you to come to St. Bonaventure. Would you sign a scholarship? And I said, out right now. Mr. Schwepka took over the team the, the following year, uh, and it asked me to come out for the team. I make the team. We won two city championships in the my junior year and my senior year. Then I get recruited by Bonaventure, and the rest is kind of like history. Billy, Calvo, and Bob were roommates. And they grew as human beings. They grew as basketball players through the four years. I remember this, this country-looking white boy, big old square-headed guy. Yeah, I guess we made kind of an odd couple, seven-foot black guy, 5'10 uh, white guy, but there was an awful lot of things that we had in common. We just kind of melted in with each other. I think he respected the fact, boy, this guy's going to get me the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Once we got to know each other, we realized that we had a lot more in common than basketball. I remember one time his uh, father came down. Mrs. Lanier was a great guy. Mrs. Lanier is my second mother. She's a sweetheart. Mr. Lanier gave Bob about $10 and happened to hand me five. Well, as soon as Mr. Lanier left, Bob says, give me that five back. I said, I'm not giving that to you. I said, Mr. your dad gave that to me. He didn't give that to you, so. <laughs> Billy liar. <laughs> oh, Billy, Billy, Billy. Quiet style of motivation and instruction blended perfectly with his team. Billy Kelbo was uh, a magician with the ball. Sometimes we'd stand there and watch him go through his little routine between the legs and around the back and just go by people. He knew the game instinctively. He was a coach on the floor. Just a great floor general. Billy would run through the wall and we'd all foul. He always knew how to get the ball to Lanier's hand. A needlepoint pass right down the middle. Probably the heart and soul squad. He set our tone. One sign in our locker room, all it said was College Park, Maryland. That's where the Final Four was that year. So uh, I think when we approached it on October 15th, we were very, con very confident that we could accomplish an awful lot of things with that team. Up to number three in the polls, heading to Philadelphia for a matchup with Villanova, heading for disappointment. I'm the one that blew it, so, <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, so I, the way I probably should talk about it. But, uh, 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 it was, you know, we played in the old Villanova Cat House where they hadn't lost for, I guess, five years since uh, Senator Bradley's Princeton team had beat them in there. Uh, it was a difficult place to play in. I remember we were down the whole game, and we got the ball out with about 30 seconds to go with a chance to tie. And uh, It was a play that I was involved in that caused us to lose. The backcourt violation. Billy threw the ball inbound to me, and we, were, we hadn't come across the half-court line yet. He threw it to me, and I was standing in the backcourt. So, and I could almost see Billy trying not to receive the ball because he knew as soon as he caught it, it was going to be called a, a backcourt violation. It was almost like a hot potato to him, and he was trying to, you know, duck and avoid the ball. And uh... so it looked like we we're out of it. And then um, I was fortunate enough to get a steal, and I knocked it. I think it was me. to you, huh? Yeah. 
Billy stole the ball, he tapped it to me, I gave it back to Billy, and, and it was going down for a layup. Somehow it came off the rim, and uh, Hank Simontowski, I don't know how, he, he knocked it away. And uh, I remember putting it back up on the rim, and I think he took it off the rim again. <laughs> Let's be honest, he took it right <laughs> off the rim. <laughs> there was no call. In the first round, we played a very good Davidson team. Uh, we beat them by 13 points. It was Kelbaugh, the smallest man on the court, who headed for the locker room a few inches taller than everyone else after gunning the Bonnies to an 85-72 victory. You and me, you just couldn't believe how many people were there. They were special, you know, and they knew they had something special, and they showed it. The regional final, a rematch with Villanova, a chance to avenge the season's lone defeat. We just played very well, and we dominated every aspect of the game. We had fast break upon fast break. Defensively and offensively, we controlled the boards. When we came down and set it up, we always scored. We gradually got to a 20-point lead and maintained it. Cowboys bring the ball down court. And I was like in front of him, and I, I went like this, and then I turned because it looked like he was about to shoot. So I turned to look at the hoop. And the next thing I knew, my leg came out onto me. I didn't see it. Uh, I do remember turning around and looking and watching our trainer run out to him. And I never knew what had happened until, you know, they told me that Chris Ford had run into my knee. To realize, to have that ecstasy of, you know, winning this thing and then going over the bench and, and find out that, that uh, you know, your main man wasn't going to be with you the next week. Um, I know my initial thoughts, it, it was devastating. I, I, you know, I just couldn't believe it. I firmly believed at that particular time we were the best team in the country. We were on such a roll. Uh, we were playing such great offensively, uh, defensively. We were rebounding the ball. Um, we did not have a major weakness at that particular time. The final four, UCLA versus New Mexico State. Bonaventure would face Jacksonville. One game away from the finals. I didn't realize that, uh, you know, Artis Gilmore was as big as he was until I met him in the parking lot after the game. I mean, that's how much I was into the game. And that's how much I really wanted to win. I was playing their butts off. I mean, hustling, but you can see the, they were trying to climb this mountain. It was like, and they were like right to the peak of the mountain. And then, Marcus, you gotta do it, Marcus, baby. In the second half, those two big old seven-foot guys just kind of like said, pow, 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 pow. I mean, obviously, I'm supposed to think that way, but I, I, I truly believe that to to this day. To one time, feel that. You are the best in the country. It, uh, it's a very exhilarating feeling. You know it. You know, I mean, it's not a question that you think it. You know it. And uh, the kids know it. Happy ending is to be able to, to look back and hold your head up and, and say, I was there.